My wife tells me I come here too often, but I play Mondays and Thursdays regularly. Bruce Burke has been playing at the Freeway Golf Course for more than 20 years. At the course a lot, so I, I just see what a fantastic public facility it is. It's a public course which has been around for nearly 50 years, but its future is under threat. Northeast Link will connect to the Eastern Freeway. The $15.8 billion Northeast Link is a massive new toll road meant to ease traffic congestion in Melbourne. But its path could mean carving off part of the golf course. There is no doubt that if this course was reduced from 18 to 9 holes, we would lose membership. It's been confirmed by our members themselves. It's not just me, it's, it's the range of people. We've got a guy who's going to be 80 years old and he drives from Oakley at 5 o'clock in the morning to play here every Thursday. That's what it means. It's not me, it's, it's a whole range of people. It's turned out to be quite a nice day. The wind's picking up a little bit. State governments have broad powers to compulsorily acquire land to build infrastructure. The states decide the amount of compensation that needs to be paid, but generally it's based on market rates. But that's a hard thing to determine when it comes to community-used land. We're nestled amongst private golf clubs. Do you really think we'd be under this sort of pressure if this was a private golf club? It's a public golf club, and so a lot of the people that play this course regularly are not getting a say in the process that's happening. The North East Link will acquire 36 homes and more than 100 businesses, as well as community land. It's necessary to acquire part of the Freeway Golf Course because there is no road reserve. It's a very complex project linking two of Melbourne's uh, biggest freeways. Uh, and there are complicated areas of the project where we need to go outside existing road reserves to, to make sure the project can work. Australia is going through the biggest infrastructure boom in its history. Across the country, major projects are being built and many require the acquisition of property. Our cities are growing and we want prosperous, uh, livable cities into the future, not just today. We are seeing governments respond to that, but unless we have that infrastructure investment, not just today, not just next year, but off into the future as well, then we won't have the prosperity and livability of our cities. Well, we can just walk up the road and go for a quick coffee. Sounds good. Medical practice manager Christine Allybone-White has lived in the Sydney inner west suburb of Roselle for more than 25 years. We first moved here because it was like a village feel, close to the city, and it just had a really lovely community feel. And there's people in the street who've lived here for 70 years, um, yeah, it's just a really nice neighbourhood. Roselle is surrounded by a huge amount of construction with the West Connects Toll Road project cutting through the suburb. Two of the planned tunnels for the project will go directly under Christine's house. It's an unknown quantity. And when you're living in a house that is your home, it's your major investment, it's concerning. It's like sort of throwing it out for, you know, for misuse or for use by somebody else and you're not in control. So this is the first letter that we received on the 8th of May. Basically. People might feel a land title means they own all the land from the surface to the sky and to the centre of the earth, but the state government can take away those rights. In order to tunnel under someone's property, the government is able to unilaterally change the deed to that property, to take ownership of the land below what's called a substratum acquisition. That's what they've done to Christine, and she won't be compensated for it. So we're sent that, and then basically um, advising us that they're going to be acquiring land greater than five metres under our property. There's just a blanket rule. It's like, we don't pay compensation, so we're not looking at it. It's not happening. So I, I don't think that's good enough. Um, I don't think that you know, there should be millions of dollars paid out to everybody at all, but I think there should be some acknowledgement that this is, this is affecting your home, affecting your major investment. The situation of substratum is quite different to when land or business is being acquired, for example, uh, where in those circumstances the government spends six months uh, negotiating what they say is market value for that land or that business. Uh, when it comes to substratum, however, uh, it's been decided, rightly or wrongly, that um, the market value is zero. 
Jessica Rippon is a solicitor in Sydney who specialises in construction and building issues. She says homeowners are only entitled to compensation if the infrastructure works cause damage to the surface of the land or to buildings. So once title is changed, you do not own it anymore. However, uh, if the work uh, that is uh, subsequently carried out, if that causes subsidence or any other damage, cracks for example are very common, uh, then the government will step in and the contractor will make good that damage. But the rules governing compensation are dependent on individual state legislation, not national rules. The states are quite capable of acquiring some of this property without giving a cent in compensation. Their constitutions place no restrictions in that regard. But of course what they have done is they put self-restraint in place. They do often give compensation because that's because they choose to do so, not because they're compelled to do so. George Williams is a constitutional law expert. He says the state governments have much more sweeping powers than the Commonwealth when it comes to acquiring land. The Commonwealth is subject to a very clear restriction. Um, it can only acquire property or it gives just terms. And there have been many court cases in the High Court enforcing that right. So if the Commonwealth takes your property, you are forced to get that compensation. But on the other hand, if it's a state, we well, have got to hope that they treat you fairly. It's really important well, to keep it. Notice the today course. the Q High School students up here. Yes, yes. yes. Up here Bruce Burke doesn't feel like the system is fair and plans on fighting to save his club. Well, it's the public. The people don't have a voice. We've been dudded by the process. They won't listen to us. They're not going to listen to the public. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.